Wintertime shelter building, wintertime bushcraft, wintertime camping. Uh, general rule of thumb, you know, and really widely accepted knowledge is that, uh, is that uh, your fire should really be somewhere in the one big step in front of the opening to, of your shelter area. You know, it ought to be about a yard from you, a meter, you know. Uh, then it's close enough that you're benefiting from the radiation of the fire, warming up your shelter and warming you up. Uh, and it's far enough away from you that, you know, hopefully you're not putting your shelter at risk of uh, catching fire. Uh, so, you know, about a meter away, uh, one big step in front of you, and I, I accept that as pretty good information myself for a lot of shelter configurations that I've done when it was cold outside. Um, that fire, however, limits the kind of shelter configurations that you can make, because a lot of tarp shelters, uh, oftentimes a tent, and even sometimes, you know, a lean-to or other natural shelter that you might build yourself can require a guy line out toward where your fire is. And mostly, you know, we make guy lines out of rope and out of 550 cord and out of twine or bank line or, or you know, I mean, some guys use Kevlar string and Dyneema, but all of those things are easy to damage with fire. That's a problem, you know, that limits what you can do for, you know, your tarp configuration or where your tent is, which way it's facing, how much fire you can gather. You know, the sorts of shelters that you can build. Yeah, so fireproof guy line, that's what this video is all about. Uh, what I have here, and we'll just talk about all this stuff. What I have here is some 1 16th stainless steel wire rope. Um, this stuff is uh, about 480 pound test, so it's not too different in strength than, uh, say, 550 cord. Um, it's very flexible, you know, very strong. You can it, 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 you know, it's pretty tough to damage this stuff, even twisting it around and, you know, it, it's not as soft as rope and you can kink it, so it's not 100% flexible like a nylon string, but it's pretty darn flexible. You know, you can, that's, it didn't damage it a bit, you know, it's, it's very flexible stuff. Um, this is seven by seven, it's seven strands of wire twisted together, and then seven of those twisted together. So it's built a lot like, uh, a lot like 550 cord is, and that's where all this strength comes from, these tiny little wires, is, is that it's all twisted together. That's, you know, if you know anything about paracord and rope, and uh, this is a wire rope, it's, it's built that way. Uh, now when you look up this 16, this 1 16th stainless steel wire rope, <clears throat> you'll see a couple of numbers. Uh, depending on what company it comes from, it's either 450 pound test or 480 pound test. And then it'll say that it's got a 90 or a 100 pound working strength. Um, the best way to think about working strength is let's just call that, you know, uh, that's what OSHA would say, you know, if you've got more than 90 or 100 pounds hanging off of this, you shouldn't be trusting it. Uh, you know, I think that's a good way to put it, you know, that uh, once you've got 100 pounds hanging off of this, you know, this isn't necessarily trustworthy not to drop a 400 pound engine block on your leg, you know, even though it's 480 pound test. Um, it is metal, it does fatigue like metal does, you know, so the more times it's been wrapped up, twisted, bent, hooked to stuff, uh, the weaker it gets because it is, it's, it's stainless steel, it's just little bitty wires and they do, you know, you shouldn't trust this to hang more than 90 pounds over your head or any bone you might break or over your foot or anything you don't want to, you know, have damaged if it does fail. 
so even though it's a 480 pound tensile strength, uh, you know, this one is a 100 pound working load. So I hope that helps you understand that. Um, the other stuff that we need, other than some of this wire rope, uh, we need a swaging tool. This swaging tool, this is an El Cheapo that I got at, uh, you know, I picked this up on eBay for like 12 bucks a few years back. Um, I see this exact same one for about the same price on eBay right now. Uh, it's fine, you know, it's, it's okay. Could have a better cutter on it. This isn't a high quality tool here. Uh, swaging tools that you'd see like a lineman or an electrician using or uh, HVAC guys. Uh, that hang stuff off of cable like this. Um, yeah, those tools are a lot more expensive, they're a lot bigger, and then the crimpers on them are good for a whole bunch of different sizes. This one's crimper is only good for these 1 16th sleeves. Uh, that's what else we need is these 1 16th sleeves to be able to make loops in the ends. I've got a whole bag of those there, but let's see if I can get these on camera for you, get you an idea of, here, let me come around the camera. Uh, sorry about that. Just a tiny little sleeve with a couple of holes through it, and this ends up getting crushed to the wire to hold our loops. And they're just little bitty things. Um, I'll show you how they work. I don't mind destroying one because they're cheap. Um, get the swaging tool in the frame so our wire will go through these uh, go through these uh, holes here and then the swaging tool crushes this onto the wire and you crush it a couple of times on a 1 16th but I did that one right in the middle just uh, just for demonstration purposes and now I'm going to have a hard time punching it out of there. Bear with me for a second and I'll, there we go. This is, it crushes that onto the wire. Uh, this is not a perfect example because we are going to crush twice. Uh, 1 16th is, uh, you crush it twice. Okay, other materials that we need. Um, so we've got our rope wire, 1 16th, stainless steel, 304. Uh, we're going to need a pocket knife, a cigarette lighter, and some heat shrink. This heat shrink is a little bit larger than what I actually need. Um, this is uh, this stuff is for uh, a quarter to one eighth inch, uh, but this these these crimps, these sleeves are, you know, they're bigger than one sixteenth. They aren't quite. I don't know. You know, I mean. This is going to work for our purposes, but I could have went one size down on this. Uh, this length of heat shrink is twice as long as I need it to be. So we are going to take a knife and make that into two pieces of heat shrink. Now we're done with our pocket knife. That was the other tool that we needed. We still need the cigarette lighter. We still need those. And let's put a loop in... Um, in uh, uh, some of this rope wire so you can see how easy this is to do. I say put your heat shrink on before you run your wire into, into the sleeves. Uh, just makes life easier. And then loop your wire over and back. <laughs> I frayed it just a little bit. I may have to nip the end off of this again. Nope, I got it. I got it. And man, those little pieces of wire are sharp when they poke you. That's why we use the heat shrink. Um, that's why we're going to be using that. So, that's how we do it. We'll position this so that we've got just a little bit of wire hanging out the end. And I'm going to just so that I can hang on to this without poking myself with those little frayed pieces of wire. And we... Oops, oops. It's kind of hard to keep 
on camera and look at this little bitty project at the same time okay and we crimp this and then we slide down it and we crimp it again and then remove the swaging tool and you see that we have crimped on these two pieces of wire here into a nice loop next step is to slide our heat shrink over it take a cigarette lighter to it melt that stuff on there Oops. make it shrink I might have used more fire than necessary to do that but there's a loop and you know this is now an incredibly secure very strong yeah let's do it again real quick so we uh, slide our slide our heat shrink on just to make life easier we run the cable through the crimp make our loop run it back through the second hole in the crimp and the sleeve I should say I guess I, I don't honestly I don't know what the name of these things there's they're called a bunch of different things and huh. I frayed the end of this just a little bit and I'm having trouble getting it to poke through the poke through this sleeve and you will run into that there I got it it's through now oh we put our swaging tool on here Again, this is a lot easier down in front of me rather than trying to keep it on camera. Don't expect quite the difficulty I'm having. This should just take seconds. And crimp it. Move down. Crimp again. Remove the crimping tool or swaging tool. Got a nice crimped on loop. Slide your heat shrink up there, put some fire on it. And there you have it. This could be any length you want it to be. Ouch, that's still a little hot uh, from the fire on it. I should have been more careful. Uh, but, you know, I bought like, I don't know, a 30 foot roll. Uh, most recently, this was, there's probably still 15 feet or something there. Um, these are each uh, about 6 foot 2 inches long with the loops in them. Uh, I just built these just, just a few minutes ago. And I've got a couple others with a tarp that's in the truck that uh, I've done this before. So there we have it. You know, that's how you do it. This is how you make a, uh, a fireproof guy line. Now, as far as attaching this to, say, a tarp, because that's one of the things I'm interested in, you might be interested in other things, but, uh, you know, you're going to say, hey, you know what, this isn't adjustable, this, you know, how do you adjust something like this? Well, on the tarp side, what I do is I take a one-foot piece of paracord and uh, put a bowline in one side, and then I, you know, uh, double that through one of these loops and then back through the uh, through the uh, uh, tie out on the tarp and then I, I put a taut line hitch on that so you end up you know on, on a it's doubled over so you know a, a one foot piece of paracord that's secured just on one side and then taut line hitch on the other uh, boy I wish I had better words for that because well, in any case, you know, use your imagination. I, I use a short piece of paracord with a bowline on one side and then run it through itself 
that's what I should have said, not through both ends, but run it through itself and then I put a top line hitch through the other side and I can slide that up and down so I've got six inches, eight inches of, uh, of adjustment on the tarp side. Um, on the ground side, this is just secured to a tent peg, you know, a stake. And I use some pretty heavy duty ones in the winter, so, you know, it's very secure and this is fireproof. These can be real close to my fire without harming them. Uh, there we go. You know what? Probably my shortest video ever because we've come to the end of it. Uh, I hope this is, uh, you know, an idea that might lead you to good ideas or, uh, you know, help you out in a little bit. This stuff is really lightweight. It's very flexible. You can't really hurt it by, you know, twisting it up, putting it away in your pack. Um, it's very strong and it's fireproof. This is great guy line material. A uh, bag of 100 crimps cost me like three bucks. Uh, this 30 foot length, I paid too much for this. I think I spent, you know, uh, 15 bucks on a 30 foot length, but I, I think you can get a 100 foot roll of that from China for about eight bucks on eBay. Um, and that's quite worthwhile. You should, you should do that if you're going to do a project like this. Uh, the swaging tool, like I said, was about 12 bucks. Heat shrink, I don't know, this whole box was full when I bought it. You know, I probably spent three or four dollars on that. And uh, the tools, you know, big lighter and a pocket knife. So there you go, that's it. Thank you for taking the time to watch another one of my videos. I hope the information I just presented proves useful to you and interesting. And I hope the rest of your day goes really, really well. Thanks, bye-bye now.